Iceland, the UK and Argentina may not have much in common, but the leaders of all three countries have shared the spotlight and the heat coming from the release of the Panama Papers this week. Iceland's Prime Minister was the first political casualty, resigning as he hadn't declared his offshore dealings. Well, here in the UK, Prime Minister David Cameron has now admitted that he sold shares in an offshore fund shortly before he came into office. The firm mentioned in the Panama Papers was set up by his late father, who passed on the shares in his will. Mr Cameron says that he paid all due taxes on the $42,000 holding. And in Argentina, a federal prosecutor has opened an investigation into the financial affairs of President Mauricio Macri. He denies accusations that he failed to properly declare an unpaid directorship in an offshore company. Well, these are just a few of the big names caught up in the massive data leak of 11 and a half million documents from the law firm Mossack Fonseca. From politics to sport and from business to film, the names have just kept coming all week. Well, we are joined from Washington by Gerard Rahl, director of the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists who has led this investigation. It just keeps on giving. What more can we expect? Well, I just think that the journalists have got to continue to look at the documents and uh, and bring out the revelations as they find them. I think it's important that people don't lose sight of the fact that we've actually got to do a lot of work behind the scenes to make sure that what we're publishing is correct. And um, I guess sometimes they just need to be a bit more patient. Uh, but I think their revelations will continue. What's the, in, in terms of the actual workload, the amount of documents is staggering. This is far bigger than, say, WikiLeaks, for example. Yes, it is. Um, but we also have more journalists looking at it than, than we've had in previous investigations. I mean, we're working with 370 reporters from more than 70 countries. So that's why you're seeing a range of, of different things coming out now. Are you surprised by just how wide scale this is? Well, not really. I guess we've been living with it now um, for, for 12 months. So we knew the potential for this story. But of course, what you saw 12 months ago and the excitement you got, uh, you had when you first started looking at it, we're now seeing with the rest of the world. Um, so I guess, you know, the work that we've been doing, we're, we're all familiar now with the documents. So um, it's no real surprise that this was going to happen. But in, in terms of, we've, we've had all the revelations that I described um, at the beginning. What's still to come? How much more do you expect that we're going to hear? I just think you're going to find out that there are more revelations from different kinds of countries. And, and you're also going to have the, the situation that you had in Britain, where politicians are going to be confronted um, by revelations and they're going to react. And their reactions sometimes become the story rather than the original, react, uh, than the original um, revelation. In terms of the company, the law firm behind all of this, Mossack Fonseca, this is just one law firm. Could there be others? Well, we know from working in this area for a while now that this is only one of about 800 firms that do this kind of work. So, yeah, we are already looking at a very small fraction of this of this offshore world. So I guess what it also, the bigger implications here is that uh, we don't know who else is going to leak more information about other companies. So this could just be the beginning of a torrent. Yes, the documents show that Hong Kong is by far the busiest office of um, the Mossack Fonseca company. Why is that, do you think? I think it's just the ease of setting up companies. You'll also see a lot of, um, of companies being set up in places like New Zealand. I think it's a, a lot of it's the fact that um, it's easier for people who want to have secrecy to work through jurisdictions, certain jurisdictions. So those jurisdictions show up in these documents. And they say that they were the victim of a hack. What do you make of that? Well, we don't know who the source of this material was. Um, it's obviously quite clear that they did not want this material to come out. So it wasn't Mossack Fonseca giving us the material. So I guess uh, it's no surprise for, for them to be saying this now. OK, Gerard Ryle, who has been leading this investigation, director of the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, fascinating to speak to you. Thank you very much.